All right, I think we are uh, going strong live here. Did a little impromptu live session tonight. Hopefully, uh, everything's going out okay. And uh, doing it, uh, kind of a surprise because um, I was uh, lucky enough to find a bottle of the uh, Our Big Scorch uh, committee release uh, a little earlier than I expected. And uh, so I thought, well, what the heck? Might as well do a bit of an earlier show and give the uh, folks a, kind of an idea of what I'm getting off the palate that knows than the finish and uh, whatnot. And I'll uh, give you kind of an overview of my experience with uh, one of my favorite distilleries is Ardbeg. Um, my tops are also Lafroig. You can probably tell behind me. I do have a lot of bottle of Ardbeg. Sadly, it's so massive that I had to move it on the other, other side of the basement. You can't see, but I have a whole shelf itself dedicated to just our big releases uh, we'll get into that in a little bit but i've uh, been around isla and campbelltown many times uh, i love lafroig is another great distillery there lagavulin got a bunch down here you can't probably hardly see um kilholman newer distillery in isla love it uh bunahaven classic distillery not always peated not always not peated but really good um different selection there um you also got you know um kalila got have had a lot of kalila unpeated and peated same kind of thing a last cause good to see you trooper uh also good to see you hope uh, you're doing well man uh sorry for the uh impromptu just kind of popping up and saying uh, hey to you guys but i really appreciate you stopping by the channel and uh Good to see you, man, from the Gulf of Mexico. Are you out on the old rig? Probably so, I imagine. Hopefully uh, doing okay out there. Hopefully you've got a bottle of, or a glass of something, a dram. That'd be nice. RB Black versus the Scorch fight. Interesting choice of uh, battle there. And uh, which will give Dustin an aneurysm first. Oh, man. I like that. That's a good one, too. Shout out to Dustin, uh, top shelf whiskey out there as well, and uh, Stephen Connor. A uh, shout out to him. Malt Muser always usually joins me on Tuesday. If you aren't, uh, if you're a new subscriber and you're not uh, aware of the usual schedule, it's Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Malt Muser and I get together and do a couple uh, drams. He also has like a uh, a happy hour before that. It starts at eight o'clock eastern his uh, on his channel so check that out on the side and yeah i've uh, been lucky enough to uh oh not on the no scotch tonight sorry about that man that's not cool but hopefully you'll get a chance to to maybe uh pick this up if i think it's worthy um uh, big if because as you guys uh, some of you guys have been uh, fans of the show for a while and i really appreciate it tell your friends if you haven't already um but i've been around the block with with Ardbeg many, many years. Uh, my first, um, well, I've got some older Ardbegs now, but my first introduction to them real time was the Dark Cove period. I was really lucky because the Dark Cove, even at this point today, to me, out of all Ardbeg releases, it is, the, the Dark Cove committee release is the quintessential Ardbeg of of their you know official releases uh I'm, i mean a 20 something's no joke if you ever get a chance to taste it it's extremely expensive unfortunately but if you do have a way to get like in a club or if you go to uh like a whiskey expo sometimes you get really good chances of tasting uh, high-end stuff without shelling out i mean you do have to shell out you know a few hundred dollars to get in the place but you're tasting like 30 to 35 is what i usually averaged uh, even little short pours you can get average 30 to 35 different great drams as long as you drink water in between you can you know hit them all pretty easy and not ruin your palate and just know when to do sherry and when to do pee to, you know nor towards the end start with your lighter stuff first your dalinis and your glen kinchies and stuff like that you make your way around then you you end you know at ardbeg or highland park or whatever but the problem with that sometimes is they run out of juice really quickly so you got to be careful how long you wait for these expos to you know once you get in you kind of have to get your your top end favorites like your brook lottie black arts or your 
um, Holland Park Darks, things like that, you know, right off the gate. Because if you don't, you're going to miss out. It happened to me with the Balvenie tune one year. But anyway, um, back to Ardbeg. Uh, I came in Dark Cove, was greatly impressed. I, I like the Kelpie a lot. I know there's not some fans, uh, some not so much fans, but it, it, it hit my palate in a, in a great way. I was still a fan of the, of the grooves. I'm looking over at my bottle so I don't miss uh, track of uh, missing some of these. Um, I was not a huge fan of the drum. I, the drum was the first one where I was kind of like, because eh, I actually enjoyed some of the previous ones. I went back and got an Era Veritas. The Perpetuum was not a wow factor for me. That was another one that was kind of like, eh, I can give her, you know, I'd rather have the NO or the 10 year than the Perpetuum just by personal choice, but it is what it is. Um, but aside from that, the drum was the only one that that really did it in for me and then one other one we'll get to shortly uh the black was actually i thought a really good release of i thought it was a great cask that they used i know some people uh get into the young whiskey that they use with it but to me it's you know if you put young whiskey in it you know it could be three years four years as long as it's got a great cask and it's mixed with other older whiskey you can get away with that sometimes and have a great product it does happen it's not always the fact but sometimes it does happen um so the black to me was actually pretty decent the art big the the rye whiskey that they released uh, recently i i was not a huge fan i was kind of let down by it to be honest with you and it's it kind of saddens me it kind of pains me because it's mickey head's swan song his farewell whiskey but to me the black was really his his ending and i think that was the best note to end on was the black release for me personally uh this one is um after all that we've we've went through kind of a brief history on some of their official releases this is this year's and this is just came out a day ago basically uh at a place that i go to uh and they usually don't get it till late. This time, I think they got it earlier than Virginia, maybe, because I haven't seen a lot of these pop up on the, uh, you know, black market, special market, whatever you want to call it. The uh, af we'll say secondary market. Sorry, not black market. That's a, that's not a good way to to put those guys. But um, and I've I've bought stuff off auctions. It's that's, that's, that's not a, a problem. But the uh, the Scorch is the new one, and this is uh, a bit different. Um, this is, I think, the first official release for the new lead, and, and it shames me that I, I do not have his name memorized yet. He literally just started. Uh, Mickey Heads has just, like, said, you know, sayonara, see you later. Um, so this, I think, is the first official deal for this new guy. So I'm thinking they're going to try to pick out some of their best juice, I would hope, to give this guy his intro. Because, I mean, well, you would have thought that with the Ardbeg being, you know, one of their best options. But to me, it was a little bit of a miss. But this one, I'm hoping, will, you know, be a, a little better. And you could tell I, I had a little little sneak peek at it just to see what we were dealing with. I didn't write anything down, though. I don't have any other ideas of what to expect. But the um, I will uh, tell you, I think you're in for a little bit of surprise, at least, uh, with this. Now, just to give you some of the, the side notes on this, and I apologize for not having this more on the ready, but let me... Uh, do a little side magic here to get some of the more information. So I just I don't like always depending on what I get off the bottle. I mean, the bottle, of course, is a good reference for some of this stuff, but sometimes you get a lot of information from supplemental sites like Distiller is one of my favorites. They they got pretty good info. Uh, Whiskey Base. I'm all, a lot of you guys are familiar with Whiskey Base and some other uh, sites that keep like database history scores things like that uh accumulations of different things but um this one being so new you're not going to really see much on there i even checked distiller they didn't have any uh reviews yet so 51.7 percent abv 51.7 is a good abv uh we'll get into the the casks in a second but uh, no wave statement but you know like i said if 
they put some young stuff in there as long as they've got some older stuff or great casks or some way to balance that younger whiskey out and i don't really notice it as much i can be cool with that some people not so much hence the black some of the mixed reviews you might have seen on that and uh and and the kelpie and some other ones i i, I adore a couple of those uh especially the kelpie is one of my my favorites uh uh, from the R Big Fish Shield. So it, it's a lot of, of it's subjective too, you know, depending on what you like. So let me uh, take a quick look at, see if there's any extra information. Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot other than the main thing is the ex bourbon casks are the, the, the start to this. Um, it's a limited edition release, you know, in honor from R Big Day and uh they this is the the new release for this year 2021 i'm just kind of skimming over all the marketing fluff i don't i don't really get into all that as far as you know the about the dragon and all that but um the dunnage warehouse number three has these scorched staves in in these burning barrels supposedly that they're using in this matured and heavily charred ex-bourbon american oak casks for an unspecified amount of time so we'll see what we get with that. Um, other than the ex bourbon, they're just noting this as like a, a fiercely charred cask, hence the scorch, the dragons, all that mess. Um, but, you know, if it tastes good, they could put whatever they want on the bottle. I really don't care. So let's get into the actual juice, if you know what I mean. Let me. Uh, uh, I'm catching up with a couple here. Tell me about the special Arbeg. <laughs> I'm going to give you the, the, the full nine yards here. I'm uh, looking forward to it. The black market. <laughs> the answer is both. Uh-oh. On the, uh, what, what's the, what's the uh, question here, Jason? I missed it. If, if it was something I asked earlier, you fill me in on that one. My theory is Arbeg is trying too hard to not veer off profile. Yeah. I see what you're saying on that. Let's have a little look, see, and see what we get. It's it's a nice color. I mean, they don't really talk about that type of stuff. Now, Ardbeg's not known for being a, a color when it comes to whiskey that I know of. I think they're usually pretty good about not doing that kind of, sh you know, shit. And um, as far as chill filtering, this is non-chill filtered on the bottle. Thank God they actually put it on there. So it's fine print, but it's still there. I'll uh, take that any day I can get it. I love the ABV. Wish it did have an age statement. I'd love to see a 15 on there, but I do can think of reasons and ways why they would have, you know, some 15 and maybe some, some, you know, 12 and some 10 and some three and have like do a blend and, and be able to maybe use a little bit, of an entire spectrum of different um, ages to get a certain taste. That does happen sometimes if they do it right. So I'm not going to fault them too much for that. I would much rather have an age statement. So I will, you know, agree with a lot of people when it comes to that. It does look like it's going to be a nice mouth coat. I can't tell how heavy it's going to be. I love a Klein Leash mouth coat. I like a heavier not so much at least a medium um i'm not into the real thinner ones like the glen goines uh typically kind of run a little thinner uh glen mora's if you're familiar with glen mora uh spelled g-l-e-n space m-o-r-a-y pronounced glen mora um trying to think thankfully most of the isla campbelltown stuff is a little on the more viscous a little more heavier either it's two different types you get like usually either an oily whiskey or a waxy whiskey when it comes to the mouth coat being a more of a heavy thick deal and we'll get to that in a second but uh i think we're looking pretty good Ooh. I just did pour it right before. I don't like letting my peated whiskey set out for too long because usually over time, of course, you're going to lose a lot of the, the oomph and the, and the power from it. So you, you kind of have to play with it. If you're looking for like, if you're doing an older peated whiskey, you want to leave, leave it, let it sit out 
a lot longer. When you're dealing with 12, 15 at the oldest, it's not, I think, as important when it comes to that. When you're, you know, 18 plus years, you definitely want to let it sit out a bit more, I think. Yes, you're going to lose maybe a little peat, but, but hopefully not much. Also, use one of those uh, challenge uh, coins, whiskey hats, whatever you want to call them. I don't have my own, but Scotch Test Dummies, Scotch Four Dummies, Aqua Vitae, uh, Whiskey in the Six. You know all the guys. Get one. Get a set. <laughs> Ooh. I get this. The first note I get is kind of like... Um, it reminds me of of like the, it's the barley that they're using with this to me is different than the typical stuff. I don't know if it's because of the Dunwich Warehouse that I'm getting it. I think that's what might be what it is because this the nose that instantly makes me think more like it has more like of a spring bank profile to it. It's got more of a Kilcarran Glengyle profile to it. It's more it's farmier. It's a little more thick. I'm not going to get into the all the the farm sense yet, but you know where I'm where I'm going for with that. Me, uh, we'll see with the scorch. Yeah, J Brent's question, Justin's aneurysm. Yeah, the both both of them probably will give him a give him an aneurysm. That'd be that'd be rough, man. Hopefully, he'll find something that he likes. Uh, I'm not gonna say I, I think he should or should not get this one because I'll feel responsible if he doesn't like it because he doesn't like a whole lot of things, it seems like. But we'll, we'll see what happens with, with this. I, I love the fruit I'm getting off this, too. Not only am I getting like a like a rope, like a, a, a rope with a little leather, but light leather with it, I'm getting like some really nice strawberry raspberry fruit. And a smoky barbecue brisket. But more like like more like a pork, like a like a pork belly. It's it's really it's 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 this is very distinct. It's a very different than the typical Arbig, which to me is a is a good thing. Because I tell you what, when I when I nose the the, the Arbig rye, I was kind of like, eh, you know. And then when I had the palate, I was kind of like, eh. It's just the pea and the rye just fought with me. I just didn't really get into it as much. But hopefully, I like where I'm going so far with this one comparatively. So Get some florals in there, too, even. Wow. Some light to medium florals, though. They're not all just, you know, the dandelions marigolds kind of thing it's also got some nice like honey thickness honeysuckle hmm even get like a bit of nice like um like an allspice very spicy in a good way, not not too uh, sharp. It doesn't have a cinnamon type of, of, of nose. It's more like a like you're more of like a sandalwood meets nutmeg, earthy sp spice, but but not too sharp on the on the on the spicy end of it. Not too sweet. Kind of a savory note on the spice level. A little bit of black pepper even in there. Sorry, I'm catching up with some comments. Hey, good to see you there, Ben. And goodbye, family <laughs> movie night just about to start. Well, thanks for at least for popping in, Ben. I appreciate it. And hopefully you can, you know, thankfully that's what's great about the channel is you can watch any show you want, any time you want. You, you can watch it more than once if you want to. I've done that myself. If I was like, you know what, I want to go back and see what, what kind of notes I had on the uh, – on the uh, – Glenmore G18 or the, you know, um, Enoch 24 or whatever it may be. So I've just picked up a, a Glenjornic uh, 21 that I've been sinking my, my teeth into. I've been really enjoying that uh, yesterday. Short but sweet, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Hi, and later there, Ben. Good to see you, man. No, no problem. I appreciate you stopping by. We're having a really good time so far. Nose has been great on the, on the Scorch. I, I'm actually enjoying it. Getting different things, getting that that Terry like type rope note keeps coming back over and over again. 
It kind of reminds me of the Kill Dalton. If you've been lucky enough, the 2014, um, the 2014 Art of Big Kill Dalton is a peated release. And this one was special because the money, the proceeds they got from it, they, they donated a bunch of it. I know I'm not sure what the percentage was and all that, but a considerable amount of it was, uh, if not all, I can't remember if it was an all or nothing thing or if it was like a, a certain level or a percentage, but they gave a lot to the people that worked on Isla specifically, um, kind of like, kind of reminds me of the teapot dram kind of thing where you can get out of what you're putting into the directly out of it and uh that release used a lot of their um i'm not sure what whose barley they used but it was very distinct very farm like very kind of organic feeling the terrar thing comes up i know with a lot of people wonder if you can tell different things with the aspects of where the where it's actually brought from and i think it makes a huge difference like when i pick up a, a bear barley or one of those um special releases from uh, kill has uh i forgot the names of some of these uh, farms but they have their own that they get from port ellen has got their own specialized stuff i think lafroy uses some of that the the lafroy 2015 carriage just comes to mind with this type of of essence that you get off the barley and to me i'm getting that kind of feeling from this whiskey uh, i'm not sure if, if it, it's got to be the dunnage warehouse they're using with this um, and it's definitely not a psychological thing i can definitely get that off even off the nose itself which is to me is a, is a pretty good uh you know awesome reward we'll say <laughs> james and henry <laughs> Cheers. Uh, what are you guys sipping tonight on the side? If you're, uh, Are you sipping an Arbig? Did you decide to bring something else to the game? If you're able to drink, I know some of you guys are uh, stuck high and dry uh, if you're working or if you're um, not with uh, tonight. But uh, if you are sipping something, let us know what you're sipping in the channel because we'll be talking about other things, not just about this uh, whiskey. We'll be rewatching this last screen. Okay, man, yeah. And I'll be talking about this with Eric. I'm going to be uh, sending Mont Muser a little sample to uh, see what he thinks as well and uh, have a little uh, fun on the side. Had a moment with some Anoch 24 the other night. Yeah, it's really good, man. It's it, it's that bluish, uh, till bluish one, first one here next to that Glenelicky right there. That's what you're looking for, man. That is a, it's a beautiful bottle for a beautiful price, 24 years. I hope to God they never change it. Tybev owns Anok. They just redid the ball barrel line. Let's hope to God they don't mess with the Spayburn or the Anok line if we can help it. <laughs> Third one, wow, Elijah Craig small batch, nice. Okay, I got you. That's a that's a tasty one. I remember being lucky enough to uh, get one from a malt muser to do as a try, and my lord, I was surprised at how good that one was. Actually, wow, and on Tuesday, Telex, <laughs> yeah, this may already be discussed, but I thought the CR release or big was the Ard big. Do they sometimes do more than one? Yeah, the they they. Do when it comes to what they have is like they have sometimes they do two releases per year and one is based off Ardbeg Day, which is definitely like in June. And I don't know if they always coincide it with Feshiel, which I think is a March thing, right? If I'm not mistaken. So it, to make a long story short, like one year they released the Era Verdes, which I think was 2014. And they also did another one was either the Perpetuum or the Ardbog. They did those two. And then one year they did the, the Ardbeg Day. I think that might have been the first one uh, when they did the, started doing the two. And they did another release like the um, the Kildalton was a, was a special release for 2014 as well. Um so uh, some of those years 13 14 they started doing like two um some some years i don't think they did do always do two though uh like with the um the black i don't remember or drum i don't remember there being two different releases that that particular time but yes this year they did two they did the art bag which was Mickey uh, had swan song send off, but should have been the black in my opinion but that's a whole nother discussion and then you have um this year is also the scorch is going to be the uh, 
I think this is more of the official Fish Shield release and the Ardbeg. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, let's scratch that. The the Fish Shield, I think, is the Ardbeg. And this, I think, is the Ardbeg Day release, which is more of a June thing because you will see a, a different release of this particular uh, bottle being the limited uh, release will be the one they release in June. And this one's like the one they do in March. So. You'll see this one first at a higher ABV. If you get it, you're lucky. It's not easy to get. The place I got one, they received six. Poor Tom, he was pissed at himself so bad he actually broke a bottle. So I got one of the five that were left. So now they're down to four. So there you go. You started out with six. And this is a huge store that gets a lot of product into Maryland. And they started out with six and they already only have four. So and, and that happens all the time, sadly, in, in whiskey stores that you don't hear about. Thankfully, most of the time it's like a Johnny Walker that they they break and they don't, you know, no offense to Johnny Walker, but they have a lot more product than something like this that comes out once per year, you know, and you're freaking lucky as hell if you can even just get one bottle, more or less, if they let you buy more than one, which is happening less and less. I've noticed uh, nowadays they kind of frown upon that, of course. Uh, I usually just get one for myself because I, I don't want to prevent other people from getting the chance to get their hands on a taste of it because I'm thankful just to, to be able to taste it and I'm not going to resell the shit. I'm not going to, you know, give in and push more money into the whole secondary market bullshit. I don't like any of that. I buy whiskey to drink it, period. Uh, every bottle you've seen has been opened and enjoyed and I don't have any <laughs> that have not been that have uh, have have stayed on the shelf in any way, shape, or form. So there you go. Good to see you there, Donner man. Good to see you guys. I really appreciate you coming out. So drinking Aaron Quarter to cast the bossy man. Do you enjoying that a lot? I've I've heard great things. I I enjoyed it too. I'm uh, thinking that's a it's a winner. Aaron's doing a hell of a job this uh, these last couple of years with their new releases. Oh, here we go. The Kildalton is my number one unicorn bottle. Realistically, a supernova. Probably a Dark Cove is a Puyana pipe dream. You can still find the Dark Cove on shelves, believe it or not. You just have to be really lucky and do some recon. Look for those old... Do, don't be afraid to go into some rural areas and just show up and look and see what they have. It happened to me uh, recently. I, I was the one that went in and got two Lafroy 18s just sitting there, 90 bucks each. Who would have thought? You know, it, you just have, but you have to go into the places that are in decent rural parts of town, but yet where they're far enough away from big cities where people don't usually go in and looking for this kind of stuff. So keep that in the back of your mind when you're doing your risky hunts, you know. Yeah, someone's the guy that came from Lafroy a, a couple of years ago found a Lafroy 15 sitting on the border between uh, Pennsylvania and Maryland. It, it can happen still even today, believe it or not. GS Fest Dram, um, sorry, GS Fest Dram 2121 Bordeaux finish 51 6.1. Bit of f extra fruit and mineral. Damn, that sounds good, man. I'm drinking the new Lafroy Sherry Oak tin now. It's been getting mixed reviews, but I think it's so solid. Okay. I'm, a, I'm excited about trying that. Um, I'm meeting with Malt tomorrow, matter of fact, in person to do some salsa swapping. And uh, that might be on the menu. So that would be awesome. But also love a dram of Ardbog from Whiskey Bar. That can be obtained still, I think, maybe. It might be. It might be a few hundred dollars, unfortunately, at this point, but you might still be able to find it. How are you liking that new Festival of GS? Yeah, definitely. So I requested uh, to follow on IG. Not sure how that works. You'll have to initiate me with the address. Would love to find that damn, yeah, Oak 10. That's, uh, that's uh, really a tough one to find so far. Too easy to... Tr to drink for its ABV. That was about the, um, that was, I'm going back here. Oh, the Aaron Quarter cast Bothy. Interesting. So you think for your, to enjoy, and this is subjective to a point. Some people like their whiskeys, like kind of not harsh, but a little, 
a little rough that gives them a little more power, a little more feel. And I can respect that. I, I like that's why I like cast strength whiskey. I do like a little punch with it. But sometimes it depends on my mood. Sometimes I do want like forty. I don't want to say 43, definitely don't want to say 40, but 46, 48, I just want something that's not in my face at 53. I just want something that's maybe a little more in the sweeter end. I'm, I'm wanting just to have a sippy, you know, just a, not a sippy cup, but well, I'd take a sippy cup with it too, but that's a whole other, that's a whole other thing. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, you just want to enjoy it without thinking of much of it. You just want a nice drink. You're watching a, a show, eating some something with it, cheese or whatever, you know, chocolate, and you're just kind of uh, taking it in. I, I can see both sides of that one on, on that one. Loving the fruit front, but those minerals are leaving a long finish. A long finish in a bad way or a good way? <laughs> Love Aaron, yeah. They're doing a great job recently. Dark Hope has gone everywhere in Canada. Oh, man, that's rough. But I'm not surprised because I was lucky enough to find a bottle in 20, I guess it has been 16 or 17. It doesn't seem like it's been that long. Of this. That's been over five years ago. It's crazy. But that's the sad thing about these yearly releases, man. I wish they had a way. I mean, what, 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 uh, what I don't get is when Ardbeg finds a gem like the Dark Cove Committee release, I guess unless they just cannot re recreate the magic, it's just impossible. Why don't they make more of that stuff and, and not just do it yearly? Make it again and make it like the Quarry Vrekin or the Ugadal or the you know, and just put the shit out there and, and put that shit out there at 57%. They do it with the Quarry Vrekin. I know they can do it with other things. So. Sorry about that. Let me go. <laughs> Took a quick look for the Scorch today online. It seems sold out everywhere. I'm going to pass an Ardbeg, but I'll probably be the Scorch within it. Well, we're going to get in the palette here in a second. Sorry to, I'm not, I don't mean to drag this out. I just wanted to catch up with your all's comments too. And the Bodega are awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to the old tasting here. Just wanted to catch up because if I, if I miss comments, especially if I'm talking to Eric, there's no way for me to catch up with you guys. It's, it's impossible. So when I get the chance now, when I'm doing like a, just a, a side, uh, chat with you guys, it's uh, just easier that way. So, so far nose, I'm, I'm actually impressed. It doesn't smell like a 30 year old whiskey, but I don't expect it to. It does have a great smell for you know it's mix of years of whiskey there's probably three four-year-old stuff in there there's probably 10 to 12 it may be even 15 and in, in around there i don't think there's anything older than that but the casks are unreal so far in this they're in a good way oh, i love how it reminds me of that kill dalton but with more a lot more char it's got the grooves char on the nose but it's got this it's got more of the black type fruit, the, the more medium raspberry, strawberry thing going on. And that, that's, uh, I talked about that earlier, but I'm also getting some marshmallows with this too. Some like sweet, more of the sweetness, more of the confection, sugary. And then it comes around right back because it's rounded. It has that really nice rope terry that, that, Almost like light leather thing going on too with that barbecue and that. And then it comes. It's like a, a full circle again with the same things that we talked about with the pork belly brisket. Let's go for a taste. Mm. Okay. I love the way it, the delivery is on Ardbeg cast strength type whiskeys, man. All right. Lots of different things. But the first thing is that wave of that medium fruit we were talking about. The strawberries and the raspberries and stuff are there with a pretty heavy char. It does have a nice char to it. But it also has, it, it has some... It must be those bourbon casks. It's got some nice back, like caramels, butterscotches and stuff going on. And it's got a bit of a creamy thing going on too. Let's go back. It's, this is all neat so far. I will come back and do a couple of drops, but I like to go in neat 
and and really feel what it what it, what you get direct from the source. No alterations. <laughs> Little dime sip. Mm. Wow. Okay. Now I'm getting more of like a wow. Shortbread cookies, sugar cookies. Mm. Some like um, a little ginger. Mm. Light brown sugar. Definitely. I mean, I, I know I'm not getting to I mean, a lot of you guys were thinking, why is he not talking about the smoke and the and the peat? It's all there. It's I'm just so used to drinking Ardbeg that the smoke and the and the tar is, and the creosote, it's it's always there. So I might not emphasize that, but it's definitely on the delivery with this. This is not the drum. Thank God. This is not the Ardbeg. This is a bit different, and and I'm not saying it's the best thing that they've ever released. It's not Dark Cove either, unfortunately. But I'm 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 happy I'm happy with with the delivery on this, and it it, it does remind me of the quality of the cast they'd used with the black. So I think we're we're in for a good ride on this one. If you like the notes that I'm kind of bringing up. Great mouth coat, oily. This is a very oily whiskey. It's not waxy, but it's 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 that nice Kleinleash kind of level without the waxiness. It's more of an oiliness. And I'm down with either one. I like a waxy whiskey, and I like an oily one. I just like it to be more of a Cody feeling. Hmm. Nice white pepper. And some anise. I'm getting some like um, not much, not heavy at all on the um, like a licorice thing. I I kind of worried me because I was looking at the bottle and you know how they they kind of go crazy with their notes. Just to give you a kind of an overview. I'm not I'm not saying this is what it's like at all, but I'm just gonna read. Um, we talked about the heavily charged ex bourbon cask. Um, intense aromas of soot and smoke lie in wait while grilled fair and black licorice mingle with bold notes of antiseptic lozenge. This truly is a dream of fantastical proportions, you know, that kind of thing. Um, here we go. Uh, fragrant patchouli. I didn't get any patchouli, thank God, because I'm not a huge patchouli fan. I mean, I, that brings me back to like, 19 early 90s high school you know you <laughs> there's a lot some people thought the chili was a good thing and and i just i just i mean i don't mind incense but i just did not like the way the chili smelled so thank god this does not smell like that to me at least but nice tar pit creosote thick kind of it, it kind of it's funny because it's, it's like it has this the, the tar and soot of like the quarry of reckon, but it has none of the crazy other things. Like it doesn't have the pepper. It doesn't have that 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 type of of overly almost in your faceness gravelly pepper, white pepper, black pepper, that kind of thing. This is more of like a fruit slash charred, spicy, but still sweet, and it has that really nice barley essence going on it's, it's it is well balanced I, I i appreciate this one a lot so far we'll get into the price later and that's when i'm gonna get on my soapbox <laughs> you're not gonna like that part <laughs> um but i'll take one for the team on this one this is why you know i was i'm like a lot of you guys i was skeptical i was like you know thinking i wasn't a big fan of the drum I was okay with the black, but I was not a fan of the Ardbeg. Am I going to take a chance again 
and be let down. And I've been let down with some Lafroig releases. I was not a huge fan of the newest port and wine cast, to be honest with you guys. I did like a lot the Triple Wood Carriages uh, cast drink. That was good. I love the Fino. Um, the Quarter Cask, I was... I was okay on it. Was, it didn't. It was kind of like the drum. It didn't wow me, but it didn't like depress me either. Um, Midier, I was down with a lot of people. You know, if you don't like a sweet dram, you're not going to like that one as much. But I love the Midier cast. I love the 2015 organic barley one that they did, and the Amontillado. Love the 14 and the Portwood. I love the 13. I can go on and on and on. But anyway, um, this is uh, this is a bit different and and different enough powerful enough i can't promise you you're not going to detect young whiskey in it I never said that never would but as far as enjoying the flavor i'm hoping to god that if you did like the black if if you were down with that i think that you will like this if you're the type that won't that haven't liked the last four or five releases from Ardbeg, then I th I I'd say use it at your own risk. But if you did like the Dark Cove, the Kelpie, the Grooves, the Black out of the last, you know, bunch, I'd say you're, you're going to be uh, pretty down with it. If you, it, this is definitely a lot better than the Perpetuum. It's a lot better than the Era Verdes, even though I did like the Era Verdes. Um, it's right up there with the Kildaltons. The I'm not gonna say Dark Cove, but it's it's up there with the Kelpie and the Black and, and the Grooves. It's 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 that level of um, I think being pretty decent, man. I'm not, I'm 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 trying to downplay it because I don't want to like be too enthused, but I don't want to oversell it either. I'm kind of like you know, so far I'm I'm having a great time with it, and I'm just kind of feeling it out. It's it's new to me, like you guys, so that's why I'm gonna be in consciously optimistic so far. <laughs> mm. Bigger sip. Still all neat. Mm. I, I, I see why I named it this way. It does have a lot of savoriness with it, with that sweetness, with the spice. It, 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 this is a, a good intro to the new master distiller at Ardbeg. I, I, I wish I knew his name. I should have looked it up before I started. It was kind of a, a haphazard, last minute kind of a thing. So sorry to be a little unprepared for you guys, but you can look it up anytime you want to. <laughs> I'm going to learn his name because this makes me appreciate maybe that they'll, you know, the only thing I would I would I would change on their delivery as far as how they release their whiskeys. If you can put an age statement on it, I would love it. If what you're doing is a certain way where you can't, you have to use some younger stuff to give it that peat power, give it that smoke oomph. Because it's hard to get this peat and smoke level that we all expect from Ardbeg without putting some younger juice in it. I, uh, I mean... The, the 20 something, of course, yes. I mean, they get it out of that, but that peat level and smoke level is there, but it's not near as high as it is on some of these more beefier, you know, power releases like the Supernova is another good example of when they do it right, you know. Especially that first one. Uh, I still have a little, I have a little minus sippy left of the first one. I'm, I'm kind of saving it for a rainy day. <laughs> Let's get back up here, man. Sorry. Wow, you guys have been uh, talky talky here. I like it. Oh man, I was already there. Sorry, guys. I'm catching up here. Loving the fruit from uh, those minerals are leaving long finish. Yep. Love the Aaron. I think we're around here, actually. GSS is good to brace against if you uh, only feel for one or two at a time. Got you there, man. I understand completely. Great price, though. <laughs> hey, everyone. Good to see you there, Christopher David. Uh, I'm truly really enjoying this release. Awesome to see what Telus thinks. Are, are you uh, sitting down with the, the Scorch 2 right now, hopefully, uh, Christopher? Are you? Hopefully, you caught all my notes I was going through. I'm not sure if you were able to... Uh, catch the beginning but hopefully i've been kind of speaking a little truth as far as you know the the 
the notes at least. I'm not seeing. Uh, I'm not giving my judgment. I'm just giving all the notes out there so far. Pleasantly, pleasantly uh, imp impressed so far with what I'm I'm dealing with. I just ordered the Bothy from Fleviar. I had the old Aaron tin. It was underwhelming. Yeah. Oh, dude, I, I'll tell you what, Andrew, this is no joke. The first experience I had with Aaron was the old 14 bottle. I think it was 14. Or was it 16? Oh, man. I had two. Oh, I think I had both, actually. I had a 14 at one point, I believe, and a 16. The 16 was the one that was, de that was kind of depressing. I was like, really? This is not what I expected. It was a little it was almost grainy to me. It had a grain profile to it. And I am not a big grain fan. Like the hedonism from Compass Box, I was kind of like, eh, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure it's great for if you like grain whiskey, but if you're not a fan of it, you you could have the best 30,000-year-old, you know, whiskey. But if you're just not into that profile, you're, it, it doesn't matter who makes it, how long it, it you know, has been there, what ABV it is, what color it is, any of that crap, it, it, you're going to not, and get into it so uh with that i was not a, a fan of the aaron 16 prior line this new line when i started out with that 21 man i was like damn this is pretty damn good and then when i had the bothy i actually enjoyed it i know some people didn't like it maybe if it didn't have enough uh, power or oomph to what the abv was was showing but the taste i i enjoyed it so it's kind of a you know I like what it, so far what I've seen from Aaron, and I'm looking forward to trying some more bottles. But uh, I, I'm, I definitely need to get my hands on a new tin. I think that was Ralphie, one of Ralphie's big choices uh, recently, wasn't it? his whiskey of the year? I think last year or something, if I remember correctly. I can't remember. I never even tried the the, the basic tin, but I'm looking forward to it. Love, 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 Aaron. I just got a quarter cast Bothy and a share of cast with Diego and <laughs> the Amber. Wow. He went nuts, man. Trooper Henry's been crazy hippie funk. <laughs> Do the funky chicken. Good to see you, Don. Whoa. Trish and Glenn, Ben Romick, cast strength, batch one. Love the stream. I'm right there with you, man. I love a cast strength, Ben Romick. That's glorious stuff there. You need to try that, Ben Romick. Love it. 57.9%, man. It's crazy. It's, it's just insane. Two he's got two backup bottles of the Romic Seas, man. That's awesome. Not the same as Spring Brain Cast Strength, but half the press with Man, what you doing with Saturday night? I'm just having fun, man. And I tell you what, I, I was I, I got the scorch and I thought, you know what? I've heard, you know, and I have experienced, I was not a fan of the Ard bag, the rye, the new one. I was not a fan of the drum. And when my buddy uh, told me, hey, I got, you know, five bottles of this. Do you want one? I'm like, well, what the hell? <laughs> it's hard to say no to Ardbeg, even though they burned me twice, three maybe times. I'll say officially, too, because the Perpetuum wasn't much of a burn. I didn't pay, like, astronomically high price. I think I got it for like 80, 90 bucks. I'd be honest with you. As I found a place that had a whole load of perpetual bottles. I think this, I think this place still has like six bottles of perpetual sitting there to be, I mean, no joke anyway, but, um, between the drum and the art bag, I was kind of like, eh, I know some of you guys thought the black was a letdown. I was fine with that, but you know, on this one, Stephen, I can't guarantee you're not going to get young whiskey, but if you're if you like a great cask, you know, I, I, I that's what it's all about to me. I don't mind if they use three or if they also have some, you know, 10, 12, 14, and the casks are really good. I don't mind it having, you know, that. But I know some of you guys are really uh, sensitive to that uh, that note that comes out, that green banana, I guess it is, or whatever. But uh, I can't say I had a technical on this, but I'm getting a lot of smoke, a lot of like that terry rope, the even some fruit, like a lot of strawberry, raspberry stuff going on. It's it's a uh, same uh, really close on the palate too, the same kind of a uh, feel. I like the fact that it's it's um it's really really nice, neat. I haven't even felt the need to even add water to it yet, but. I might in a little bit. <laughs> we'll see how, yeah, how the uh, quarter cast goes. I finally pulled the trigger on that one after the malt review. 
Well, we'll see how that goes, man. Hopefully he uh, has some good notes on that. The old white man. The 16 was one of those. This is how old we have bottlings. They only had a couple of years stock to work with, uh, if I can recall correctly. Yeah, that explains why the 16 was such a bad deal, man. Love the 14. Okay, it wasn't the 14. It was the 16. That was the problem. See, I heard the four. This is when this is when you make. This is a good example of making a whiskey mistake. I'm gonna try. I'm not saying I'm teaching you guys anything, but I'm gonna try to share the letdown and what happened to me, so it doesn't happen to you. So I'm hearing all this love about the Aaron 14. This is back going back to the old series prior to the one we're in right now. Um, the Aaron 14 I heard was great. So I had a, a, the option of finding a 16-year bo bottle for a great price at one of those dusty old places, rural in, in Maryland somewhere. I just found it. And I thought, well, what the hell? 16-year-old, it's got to be, you know – at least as good as the Lagavulin 16, you would think. No, <laughs> it, it doesn't work that way. And just because a, a distillery releases an out fucking standing 14 year old, their 16, 18, 21 could be dog shit horrible. And you, you just don't know until you do your homework. It's, it is, it is that iffy when it comes to some of these releases and i learned the hard way on that one man thankful god i didn't spend over a hundred dollars on the bottle but if i did i would have been really pissed the 18 sherry is amazing i'd love to get my hands on that one i've heard the 18 is really the uh, unless it's not true i've heard the 18 might even be better than 21 i i would be surprised because the Aaron 21 was my whiskey of the year last year that's how good it was i haven't even tried the 18 yet so i gotta get my hands on that this Ardbeg sounds great. No, the price not so great. I'll get to that in just a second, man. I'll, let me catch up real fast. 18 looks like a sherry bomb. Yes. Oops. How uh, good is it? Love the uh, 10s and 15s. Yeah. Good to see, see Steven, definitely. I traded my CR for a free bank 12. Wow. Did you, did you open this any CR first before you tried it? And uh, was you really that down on the black CR? I'm just curious. I feel good about that. Did you did you ever try it? Not buying the scorch done with the CRs until further notice. Yeah, I was telling people about that. That I know I, I felt the same way. I was kind of like after the Ardbeg and the uh, the drum. I was kind of like I don't know, guys, man. I, I I enjoyed the black, but you know that's the last one out of a bunch of releases that I really like enjoyed. And I think it's because I have a sweet tooth. I like the sweetness out of it. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I would make that trade. Wow, for so you liked it better too. Okay. Huh. Found a store last year and put much cheap. Yeah, put one for ninety. A few minutes later, bought another. I thought it was decent for the price. Yeah, ninety bucks. It's it's actually a good whiskey for ninety. I, I'd say it's not you know not your soft soft great, but you know new packaging room with six stars Canadian it was mad at best for me. That's so true on different buildings. Yeah, it happens, man. So much It's crazy. I'm just always suspicious of rebranding. Yeah, but Aaron did a good job on this one, I think, man. The old Aaron, yeah, 14 was great. Sticky, fresh marshmallows. The, tw the new 21 is fantastic. I love it, man. Just ordered an Aaron 18 uh, for 120 Canadian. I don't blame you for that. Have you had a chance to sample the 25 yet? No, I wish, man. I, I I might. I would almost think about giving my left testicle for that, but I don't want to go crazy. I would love to have a taste of it, though, but it's just way out of my price range right now. Maybe down the road, but I might have to uh, get a promotion or something for buying that kind of bottle. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I really appreciate you all. Uh, Come about. Let's get more into this whiskey, man. Yeah. Rewind if you if I if you're missing a lot of the notes I've already went over. I went over the nose and the palate pretty much already. Still, 
I, I love that Springbank esque barley note. I'm getting. It's not as funky. I don't want you to think there's. It's a funky dram by any means. It's it's it does have this like terry rope, slight leathery thing going on with the strawberries and the raspberries, the white pepper, the st star anise, like the allspice kind of thing. No cinnamon. The only thing I wish it it doesn't have. I wish it did have is like more of a chocolatey, fudgy note. It could even be like a mineral type of note to give it even more balance, even more of like a, a savory end to the finish. This one's more in the medium to lighter end on the, um, which is surprising to me. This is, is it has an initial charring. It's more smoky and in your face at the, at the at the beginning more than the end. The end, excuse me, is more of like a. It's got a lot of notes, more of like a buttered popcorn, like a like, like a creaminess. It does have a bit of that the licorice, but it's very subtle. It's it's very in the back. It, it's it's more. Those that that fruit is is actually more prevalent in this, which is really surprising with the peat and the smoke. And those bourbon cast notes are are are, are pretty much in your face too. The pepper is there. Too. It's 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 wild. It, it it goes in a circle and it keeps going. That part is in, in a good way. And it's a medium to, I'd say a medium finish. I love the oiliness of this whiskey. I love the the thickness of of, of the of the mouth coat. That really helps it a lot with this too. I'm sure the ABV is helping a lot. Fifty one point seven is no joke, but it doesn't taste very hot. I, I have yet to to add water to it. I've been drinking this neat the whole time, and I haven't even switched over to water. I guess I better do that before it gets too late. <laughs> oh man, it really is. I've been stocking up in the previous twenty one. At least the purple box. We have not seen new one. Yeah, Christopher, are you having the um? Are you having the scorch uh, at the same time? I think you said that you might have had a bottle of this. And are you getting similar notes uh, that I've been uh, getting into? I won a lottery, yeah. <laughs> it's surprising how, like, I knew it, they were going for, like, the charring, and I knew it was going to be kind of reminding me of more of, like, a Gru's release. And it does have that, but this has no, like, there's no tropical thing going on. The fruits are very medium rich red fruits i never had a dragon fruit i'm not sure if that's in here or not that's only that's one of the very few fruits i haven't actually had before i, I was surprised i had a durian before i would have a dragon fruit that's kind of crazy i take that back i think i actually have had dragon fruit that's in thai food i believe isn't it I might actually, if I think I remember, that's the one with the white with the little black um, seeds in it, with the red outline, but I think it's white with the black seeds. I think I actually have had that. That might actually be in this a little bit, but it's definitely more of the, more of the uh, raspberry, strawberry, taffy. I'm getting like a, it, 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 it's so thick. It's got like a, like a, like a strawberry, cherry, taffy thing going on. I like the I like the peat level still smoke level still really good. Man, I'm really uh I'm really uh, having a pretty good time. Now let's talk about the price. That's where I have my biggest beef with this. <laughs> As I'm enjoying the hell out of it, but it's it, you know this should be 110. If it was one to 110, I would be completely like thumbs up. Go get it. No issues. This was a 150. Now we're getting like into what I would consider like eight. I mean, at least 15 year to 18 year prices when you get 
depending on the brand, of course, not talking like McAllen 18, of course, that's just nonsense, but like a typical, what you guys would consider a good price for like a, like a 15, one to 110, you know, I would say that's, that's reasonable. And, and that's what kills me when this, and this is where I, I don't agree with, completely with the peep folks that say stay away but on one hand because i do enjoy that what the product is but for the price now that they're pushing it pushing it up you gotta draw the line somewhere and i'm thinking 120 125 is where they should have stopped pushing the price up when they when they crept it up from 110 to 120 i was already had my my eyes like what, what, what are we doing here guys i mean ten dollars just for the fucking fun of it what, what, what is this about and then when you hear stories about i mean this art bag price i was like you gotta be kidding me i mean I, and i spent more than the actual going rate which is really sad for for getting my hands on that art bag and i was really saddened by what i was getting this not so much this I'm I'm comfortable. I'm not happy happy with the 150. It's not as painful as that damn art bag. That was a fucking nightmare, honestly, with the price on that. Um, and the drum was a bit pricey, I think, for what it was. It should have been more of like a ninety, hundred, or hundred dollar bottle. But the uh, the black is where they should have left it. I think that was like 125, 120. That's where they should have stopped. And then now that you're getting the 150 level, I'm thinking, you know. Let's not go crazy overboard. I do love the product. I do think they did a good release on this one. It's just, man, uh, this is a U.S. bottle. This is a uh, 750 milliliter, uh, 51.7. Got it in Maryland, direct. Uh, 150 though, man. I'm like, ah, oh, that's a little. That's a little painful. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's so good. <laughs> Mr. Morgan has uh, it caught me in the act of uh, not adding my water. <laughs> so, it, I mean, you know, it is sort of what it is when it comes to the whole... If I'm enjoying it this much neat, for 120 I would have been happy at been like you guys got to go get a bottle right now the 150 thing is the the only thing that's making me think wow you guys are really it's like mission creep when you're at a job and i know some of you guys work in uh, different industries i work in it and there is an enterprise architect there is nothing worse than mission creep because you already have to keep your eyes on networking on uh server admin on security, on um, the help desk, on you know customer relations, on the whole shebang, and make sure standards are kept, standards are met, compliance with licensing and all that stuff. And when you, there's too many things going on. That uh, I, I can go on and on. <laughs> Sorry, I I don't want to get off on tangents, but. Let's have one little drop there. See if we get any difference. If we don't, we'll do it in one more drop just to see. I don't want to take away too much from what we're doing with here. Hmm. Is that more bourbon cast notes I'm getting maybe? Don't take my fruit away. Ooh, it's getting spicier maybe. Maybe even a little sweeter. Interesting. Hmm. That's not bad. A little different. Don't want to take my smoke away, though. See, that's where... That's what's hard to add water much at all to a peated whiskey. Because you don't want to lose your smoke in your peat, you know. Thankfully, I was. that's why I did one drop to start with, just to see... Still get my terry rope, my uh, leathery uh, note too. Mm. Yep, yeah, I'm getting um. The char still there. Bourbon cast notes a little more up front. Definitely a little more spice, a little more white pepper.
Hmm, it's a little more creamier, maybe. Not getting my chocolate. I am getting lots of vanillas, though, which is nice. Strawberry vanilla, kind of like that strawberry vanilla swirl thing going on. Hmm. It's funny. It's like if you took the grooves and the black. If you took the charring of the grooves, minus the tropical stuff, minus the, you know, that. Keep the barbecue notes from the grooves. And then you add the Pinot Noir because it's not the same by any means but it does have that strawberry raspberry medium ruby red fruits things going on that's what it kind of reminds me of i'm trying to kind of help you try to guys visualize mentally what taste wise we're dealing with here do i wish it had more of a char on the finish yes does it have it on delivery yes but it it's it, it does Hmm. I'm, I'm struggling with the finish a little bit on this. That's the only thing. It's more of a, it's funny because I mean, being a scorch dragon cask, you know, deal, it gets it in your head that you're expecting this like really overly smoked or, or, char delivery and to me this is more of a, a a fruity creamy with the the spice and the char i don't know maybe there's just so much going on it's 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 surprising to me it's, uh, I'm, I'm struggling with I, I'm expecting that fudgy or dark chocolate or min, minerality, and that's the only thing that I'm not getting that I'm expecting to be there. And and, and that's the only thing. But there's there's more fruit, more bourbon cast notes, more spice than I anticipated. So I'm kind of fighting that balance, you know, of what I'm dealing with here. Let me go. Let's see what you guys are talking about. Yes, uh, finally added a little water to that. I might have to go back to neat because I think I preferred it neat, to be honest with you. Paid 120 for the standard of Kelpie and Black. I thought they were worth the price. Paid a hefty sum on a generous pour for the Dark Cove. Yeah. Yeah, 120, I, I, you know, 110, 120 was my, my okay price on these limited releases. When, and, and I'm hoping if I find out this is just a, a, a Maryland's, special price then i got a little gouged i will be upset because i shop at one place usually in here in maryland they might i don't think they would do me like that but i will find out but um he he's straight up said told me 150 over the phone i was kind of like man i don't know that's a bit more than the usual deal but these are special casks and that's where it gets tough when you're dealing with these art big special releases, yes, you get pissed because you think, okay, I'm spending money for young whiskey mixed with older whiskey, and yes, it's high ABV, but I don't really know what I'm getting. The only thing I know, it's not chill filtered, and it's high ABV. Is it going to be really worth what they're charging me? And at 120, I was so comfortable, but once you get above 125, I'm like, man, it's a yearly release. Yes, it's a great ABV, but you're not giving me anything that's that old. Yes, you've got great casks, and that's where it gets it gets painfully debatable, I think, on, on is it worth it? Uh, Steven saying, I had a 10-year-old Arbig, 43% from 1977 a couple weeks ago. Wow, I would never buy another modern day art big if i could get my hands on those cons on a consistent basis that tells you a lot right there man yeah that's something else and i don't disagree by any means this is why i would love i would give and i i know that eric just got his hands on a white horse log of 116 that I bet is going to be fucking phenomenal. I cannot wait to try a White Horse Lagavulin. That's the old, prior to Diageo uh, bottling. And man, I I'm going to be I'm going to be happy. 
That's a little pricey to for that RBEG. Yeah, I was wondering, but is, are you basing that off of previous releases or current Scorch prices you're seeing right now that's available? That's my question for you there. Also didn't like the CR drum. I didn't either, man. Generous DC, NYC bartender gave me a sample of it after I bought a very expensive Lafroig. And it was very off-putting. I was glad it was for free. Well, for me, I'm not going to say it was off-putting, but I expected more of a rum feel to it. Like the Glymphitic 21 rum cask finish, that is a good rum whiskey. Um, yes, it's 21 years old, I know, and it's it's a it's a bit more for what you're you know doing but if you're gonna bother putting out a rum cask whiskey at least give me something comparable to uh what's another good rum like the caribbean uh, i think the balvany caribbean cask has some remnants of a of that type of thing or um i've had other rum cask based whiskeys and they're just better it was just so it was. It reminded me of the Ardbeg rye. The peat and the rye just. It just didn't work for me. And the peat and the rum. I. They just need more rum aspects of the cast to really do much. I think with it. When it comes to these charred, like this one, and the the grooves and the um, the dark cove, the kelpie. When it comes to those, they get away with it because they have more power, more things going on, more balance. The the rum thing just was just there. It didn't really you know, one thirty. Okay, so I was man twenty dollars more. Man, that's painful. I'm about to have a talk with my guy because <laughs> that is a bit much, man. Twenty dollars more makes me kind of angry. Uh, saw Kingsbury Art Big. 67 for sale for 30,000 pounds and had to pass. <laughs> I love you guys, man. Uh, I, could you imagine just being able to like being able to say, well, 30,000 pounds, what the fell? You know, what the fuck? Just put it down there. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> Go for it, share it with friends. I pitch in a, a little money for it. <laughs> not, not the hundreds, 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 thousands and stuff, but Maybe we could all pitch in. Maryland cost was 109. Damn. So they made 50 extra dollars off that? I'm not happy. I'm going to have to have a little talk. OG bottlings, yeah. Drum and Groot sucked. Huh. I was not a fan of the drum. I, I, I enjoyed the Groot for the, the, the tropical, the char, the... Fruit balance. I don't know. I, I, it wasn't near as good as the Dark Cove. I didn't think that the groove sucked, but I don't know. That's that's a tough one, man. This has been discussed in your shows with Eric before, but Lefroy does a much better job with special releases with prices generally under 100 Yeah, but that newest, that, that port and wine cast, which I was not a huge fan of, was higher. It was in the 120-something, I think, uh, if not one th close to 130 So they, they have also been price creeping. At least maybe I have, man, I'm going to have to watch my guys here in Maryland because if they're, if they're creeping and no one else is creeping, I'm going to have to have a, a little talk and uh, see what's going on because that's not good. He's born 14, Emirate, eight year rum cast destroys rums from fish. Okay, I have I have yet to have a Hazelburn or an Emirate uh, rum cast, so I'll have to try those. Maybe I just haven't had enough with uh, with that, but yeah, I can I can I can get you. I I, I see what you're saying with that one. Yeah, that that last uh, that last Lafroig was not one of my favorite releases, and I thought they price crept a little bit on that one. I might have to keep an eye on my guys here in Maryland because they they're notoriously bad with Glendronic prices, and I, I I cannot buy a Glendronic in Maryland unless it's like I don't know, like it's 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 tough. <laughs> hmm. What you got sipping now? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I think on this one, 
without getting carried away, the price I'm not happy with, the product I am happy with. But keep in mind, I finish is pretty good, actually, man. It's, it's medium. I can't say it's ultra long or anything, but it's definitely medium level. Oh, man. Are we going to score this puppy? It's tough. I'm, I'm kind of not really big on the whole score thing, to be honest with you, much anymore, because the scoring thing is, is it's so subjective with this stuff. Because what what I what the notes I like and, and you know if I have a sweet tooth compared to somebody else it, it, it throws all that off. All I'm going to say on this one, you know, if I if I had to give it a score, it would definitely be a way above a three. It would be a round of at least a four, if not four two five four five somewhere on there. It's because. The, the casks are are phenomenal with this. I don't care what you say about young whiskey or old whiskey, none of that shit. The casks are, are fucking real in this. If you don't like young whiskey, you know, at all being mixed with young older stuff, I can't guarantee it's it's not here. I'm not really good at detecting the younger stuff when it comes to when it's put with a great cask and with a great um ABV profile, the balance is there. I can definitely tell you there's sweetness, there's savory notes, there's a spice factor. Everything is there, but I wish there was either some minerality or chocolate factor going on. That's missing. I do love the fruit. I do love the spice. I do love the ABV. I do love the mouth coat. It's very oily. It's not waxy. It's um, it does have a good char, a good smoke. It's great on delivery. The char and smoke is not there on the finish as much. I'm just kind of giving my summary. One fifty to me is a bit pricey. It is definitely worth one twenty to one twenty five. I'm not sure if you can get it for that. Probably not. Will the limited release be worth it when it's released? Now that is going to be the magic question, I think, at this point, because you can get that for about ninety to a hundred dollars usually. 110 probably at this rate since they rose all the other prices. Um, at that ABV, it's usually 46% when they release the limited release. That is going to be iffy because will the cash shine more with a lower, you know, ABV? Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get, you know, lucky with that because the price is lowered because the ABV is lowered. But usually to me, I'll enjoy the higher ABV more. So. It's very rare if I'm given two options of, of a whiskey where, I, where I'd ever choose the lower ABV over the higher one because the higher one usually in, just intensifies the flavor, the mouth coat, the, all, a little bit of everything. You know, this is why we love our cast strength whiskey. So it's 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 really that's it's, it's a, that's the toughest part about this. It's limited. And then that's what, and that's you know, this is where they they get you on the rarity thing. But my question still remains: Why can't you put out a Dark Cove committee release right now and do it on a yearly basis? You know that whiskey's great. You know it's it's almost perfection. Honestly, it is the staple. It's a filet mignon with cherry cordial. In a glass. I mean, it's 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 fucking perfect. Why not fucking release it? Because we love it. <laughs> That's the one I want to see again. And I, every time that you guys come out with another release, good and bad, I always compare it to the Dark Cove Committee release every fucking time. And it doesn't matter. And it could be even before that: the Galdalton, the Eriveritas, the Perpetuum, the Ardbog. Another good, great release. Ardbog is up there with the Dark Cove, but those are the only two 
where I would love to see it on a regular basis. These other ones, you know, obviously are hit and miss because we're all divided. We're not divided on the drum and the perpetuum and the and the probably the Ardbeg at this point, but we are 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 still divided even on the the black and the grooves. So why bullshit around? The, you know why why you know fuck around? Why not just focus on what you do great? And that's the Dark Cove committee release. Done. Gavel's been 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 dropped. That's what I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I go on a tirade, but I just had to to get some uh, some feeling out there. Lot forty twelve year cast strength bottle kill, man. That sounds it sounds good. I'm not familiar with the lot forty stuff, but I've heard about it. I'm gonna have to uh, get on that. Ooh, that's a really good, really great bottle. That was one that took me time to appreciate too, which is kind of funny. And those are the bottles I really appreciate even more because they challenge you um my first uh excuse me one second sorry for the for the little bit of gas there uh my favorite was the starting point was the glen scotia 15 that was a beautiful bottle and i was like wow and it's funny that was my first introduction i think to campbelltown and i was like you know, next to the Springbank 10. And I was like, wow, between the Springbank 10, the 12 cast strength, the 15 green, the, the 19 port cask, Springbank's got it going for him. And then you throw in things like Glengyle, Kilcarran, and then I have the Glen Scotia, you know, 15. I was like blown away. So then I see this bottle. I'm like, oh, it's a no brainer. Glen Scotia, you know, 15 is solid never had the double cask at that point yet never had the 18 at that point yet never had anything else so i thought i'll try the victoriana and i got in there and i'm like oh wow this is a great abv i remember it was being a little higher no age statement but okay i, I can still play you know like i said they're, they're probably taking some a little bit of four for pete maybe or some sort of essence mixing it with a 15 18 whatever else whatever it takes to get the job done if it's great i don't care take it and at first i was like wow i think it was i was too early on in my whiskey journey and it was so complex that i didn't appreciate all the factors going on i probably at first thought i'm dealing with a disjointed whiskey at, at this point but i did take account that i didn't have enough of the crazy complex stuff to really appreciate what was going on with that one and thankfully i had my own bottle because if i did a sample i probably would have thrown three point you know five at it and have been you know like eh, pretty good but not my you know wheelhouse let's go to the next thing but sitting down with it and giving it time playing with the water factor because it's got a great abv and um oxidation makes a huge difference with whiskey a lot of you guys thankfully know that already some guys don't i'm here to try to help everybody as much as i can definitely if you if you don't if you open a whiskey and you're not really it, with it this happened to me huge big time with the kalila unpeated 17 year at first i opened that whiskey and i thought okay knows it i'm like what am i dealing with here this is this is different okay not 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 bad not a lot going on to me at the time i'm like okay well let's go in and for the palate it was the saltiest whiskey i ever tasted briniest maritime in your face hardcore to the point where i wasn't able to get anything else two two point five out of five i would have been like don't buy it. Don't go near it. Horrible. I can't believe I spent $150 on a 17-year Kalila 17 unpeated. I, I just put it to the side. You know, fuck that shit. So then I, I gave it a bit of time, not understanding the concept of the oxidation deal. So I go in and still, you know, three months later, just wasn't feeling it. Six months later... And still had a good, you know, half to a little more than a half left. Go in, beautiful whiskey, 
almost perfection, 4.5 out of 5 minimum. That can make a huge difference with whiskey. Night and day, 4.5 versus 2.0 to 2.25, 2.5 tops. It was so salty to to start with. I just couldn't even I couldn't even go there. It was that bad, brining to all hell. But after some oxidation, that brininess went away a little bit. Saltiness went down a bit. All the 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 barley and the and the the essence of Kalila, the vegetal beautiful notes that, that came up. Then it became what I would consider a great whiskey after that. So that's just my, my tale of give your whiskey time. Even if it doesn't have an age statement, please consider it. And um, if you don't like the first pass or second or third pass, put it away for a few months, come back. Still, if it's still not your wheelhouse, put it away for a few more months, come back. And then you, you might be like, wow, this is a lot different than I expected to 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 be. Moved on to, to my favorite current Deanston Twelve Year Madeira. Wow, that sounds really good, man. I love a Madeira cask. I know some people are kind of indifferent. It's a very it's it's on the sweeter side of things. It's got some nice floral notes in it too. Usually, for me, I get florals. I get sweet. I get fruit. I get peaches, strawberries. Usually, a lot of red fruits. A lot of sweetness, but I love it if it's balanced right with with the barley and the if it's got some spiciness to it or other things. The bourbon cast thing going on if it's a finish. Uh, I I just hope Arbit gets back his mojo back. Yeah, I love the distillery and core range is still solid. Drinking twenty nine Corey right now, very good choice, man. Ooh, an 09 Corey, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that in a good way, Steven. I still got to talk to you about it, getting the Ben Nevis distillery version, man. I got my heart set on a 21-year distillery bottle. Cast strength would be beautiful. Hopefully it doesn't cost over $600. That would be beautiful, too. <laughs> so we'll have to talk on the side if you don't mind. Um, I got I to gotta send you... Uh, an email or a text or some point. So I'll, I'll definitely try to, uh, might not be able to do it tomorrow, but I'll try to get with you on the side and, uh, see if you can, uh, recommend at least a Ben Nevis uh, distillery bottle that makes sense to, uh, take a hard look at. And, um, also a, a, an independent, and I know you're the master of those, uh, I'll Delphi. I'm be looking at those and uh, signatory cadence heads. Um, I we'll to talk about maybe uh, a distillery bottle at some point too, because I want to collect uh, both sides of the fence. And I know a lot of you guys are waiting for me to get to the independent side of the fence. I'm still having fun with the distilleries. There's still distilleries that I haven't touched yet. We'll be getting we'll be getting to some really good stuff. I'll give you a pristine preview before we take off tonight on what's coming in the show. I got my Lafroy Port and Wine from a eight eighty five. Damn, decent shipping if you order multiple bottles. Yeah, yeah, it was one twenty. That's uh, yeah, it was one twenty, one twenty five, and they're doing some mission creep too on the pricing. Must be the standard forty six will be one twenty, unfortunately. Oh man, oh that's that's. Uh, if it's a great, I mean, this is the thing with Ardbeg. This this is what pains me. The ABV. And the casks that they're using almost justifies it at that price. And, and the 46, I know, is getting left behind with the 120. But the casks are damn good. I can, I can feel them. I know them. I, I appreciate them. Not, maybe not as much as some people because they detect the young whiskey in, in the Ardbeg deal, even on the Fashil stuff. But... It's so divisive, man. This is, this is, it's, 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 the, they've definitely met the threshold of what they should be charging. Because once you get above 120, 125 on these yearlies with no age statements, it's really hard to justify that when you don't know how much time and effort and rarity of the cast they're using. And they're, they're putting this marketing spin on it so it feels like you. You don't know what to believe, and that's that's what that's what makes it really kind of tough. 
It's an egg, yeah. An interesting contrast to the cherry oak tin. Now, see, a lot of people I know were mixed on the Seneg. I like the Seneg because I appreciate a savory dram. To me, that had very little sweetness. It had more of the spice and savory notes with it. But I was down with that because I knew what to expect. The Longmore 16 reminds me a lot of the Seneg. The uh, Highland Park 15 Fire, that reminds me a bit of the Seneg. It has that spicy, savory delivery. And if you're in the mood for just more something like, you know, an, an Ethiopian Sambusa, something a little more like that, then it's a great deal. If you're not looking for something that's, that's you know, savory, man. Eh. Oh, and the scorch. The MSRP was was one twenty. On the uh, yeah, on the yeah, that that makes sense because since they were doing one fifty on the committee release, I would, had a feeling they were probably doing a ten to twenty dollar jump on the uh, on the uh, limited release too. But I hope it took them a long time, and these casts are fucking rare for that kind of price, man. That's all I'm going to say on that. I've seen a 21-year Benevis official bottling casting at the auction right now. What's the damage, man? What's the damage? I'm afraid to ask, but might as well try and see. I'm going to give you, before we uh, take off later, let me give you a sneak preview of what's come to come on the uh, channel on the side. i got a couple bottles I just got in. I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Um, got a couple of interesting ones coming. Um, one thing I got picked up recently, I don't have it in my hands, uh, but it is over there. I've been sipping a little bit off and on on it, is the uh, the Glendronic Parliament 21 non-chill filter to make sure it was an actual decent bottling. So we'll be taking a look at that one at some point. Um, a lot of you guys are already familiar with Glendronic, but... Uh, Parliament 21 to me is a special because I love the combination of the PX and Oloroso on that one. A lot of people love the, the more dry Oloroso notes on the Allardyce 18, but I kind of like a little bit of a, a more of a mix on that one. So we'll be looking at that one later on at some point. Uh, a couple other new ones that we just picked up was these, um, the Daft Mill uh, 20, uh, 2007. This has actually got an age statement, which makes me happy. I don't know if this was always on it, but this one's matured for 12 years in oak barrels. So this is actually a 12-year-old is the way I would understand that. Crown distilled, matured, and bottled in Fife, uh, Francis and Ian Cuthbert, 750 milliliters, American bottle, 46% uh, ABV. Not the uh, highest, but this is a brand-new distillery, Lowland Scotch. This is... Is, is sought after. This is, uh, they usually do a winter and a summer batch. I don't know if they do other seasons. I haven't seen any. I think it's just summer and winter. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, on this one. But this is the winter release from um, uh, Winter Batch. And this is uh, 1680 bottles. So it's, it's out there. Runs about 225 to 230-ish. Um, so it's kind of pricey for a new uh, distillery. But these guys do it like the spring banks and the more organic uh, hands-on um, process. It's a farm distillery owned and operated by the Cuthbert family. It only runs in the farm's quiet periods, summer, midsummer and, and winter. So there we go. Sometimes producing as few as 100 casts per year. When not distilling, Francis Cuthbert looks after the estate growing the malt barley used to make the Lowland whiskey. Uh, the barley variety optic was grown in our south fields and harvested in the last week of August 2006. It was then stored in the farm to be malted in aloe 
during the summer of 2007. I'm probably butchering the person pronunciation. Forgive me for that. Um, the six first Phil X bourbon barrels that make up this bottling were distilled and filled on November of 2007. They're very specific. I do appreciate that. They even give you um, the KY15 5RF, which is the uh, probably the uh, cask it came from, product of Scotland, of course. Um, pretty straightforward with presentation. I love the fact that the six first fill X bourbon barrels were used for this. So no wonder it's got an interesting uh, delivery. And we'll talk about that one in detail uh, coming up fairly soon after I get down the bottle a bit. And this puppy, I have been happy as hell to get my hands on. This one is a tough one to find, guys. This is a brand new distillery, Alice Sky. This is a 2017 uh, Asian oak cask, smoke and brine type of delivery, 46%. Heavily-ish, we'll say peated, uh, supposedly. Haven't touched this one yet. Uh, I did pour a sample for uh, Eric, but I haven't even tried it yet. Um, eager to um, snack my teeth into it because... My my guy told me that this one was selling pretty uh, pretty heavily uh, recently, and for peated is surprisingly this is um, I think these guys what are these um, these are islands right yeah islands if you consider islands I know some people throw them into the highland area but I think the islands are distinctly different because they do pull off a lot of great peated whiskeys. And this is supposedly one of uh, the better ones that are new. A uh, heavily peated single malt whiskey made with Concerto Marta Ballerly with an ingrain phenol content of 50 to 60 ppm. So 55 to 60 ppm, we're already talking at Ardbeg Lafroig levels of their 10-year-old. Um, fermented with a pinnacle MG plus yeast and aged solely in first fill bourbon barrels, Bottled at 46% with no chill filtration or coloring, a residual phenol level of 16 ppm as well. Part of Scotland, Torveg. Torveg is the name of this distillery. Uh, you might notice the BH there. Bunahaven, same kind of concept, soft V, Torveg. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to this one too. Uh, Andrews had it and, and thought it was great for the price. There you go. Both unicorns bottles in the UK. He's probably talking about some older ones, maybe. Or maybe both of these are. The that one makes me think of Jeremy's recent video. I don't know which one Jeremy is, but uh, I didn't know there was uh, someone that did one uh, of this one uh, recently. Was it also the uh, the 07 winter release? I'm just curious if it's, if it's the same bottle. If it was, I might even take a look at the uh, of what he had to say, just just uh, for curiosity's sake. But yeah, I picked up those recently, so I was really happy about uh, getting into it. Let me ha have a little more. <laughs> I'm I'm a sucker for this uh, for this one. I think a bit. So I love the casks. It's 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 funny because. Minus the drum and the Ardbeg and the Perpetuum, I have to say, they usually have really damn good casks. I don't know what it is about them, but some appreciate them, I think, more than others. Um, if you were a fan of the Black, I'd say this is a no-brainer. you got to pick it up. If you were iffy on the Black, I would be iffy on this one because of the price. That's the only reason I would be like hesitant to recommend it to somebody because you know if you already were a fan of the grooves in the black i know you're down with the casks that ardbeg usually uses therefore it's easy to recommend this whiskey to you if you're you know on the fence and you're kind of like well i didn't like anything they've released in the past five years I don't think there's going to be a way to please you with their official releases. I just, and if you are more pleased with the Lafroig line, that's okay. But I would be still surprised because it's the same kind of thing where it's, you know, no age, 
you never know what they're putting in there. The crafts are great, but you know the the the, the price is elevating. It's kind of like I don't know. It's it's a tough one, but um, and it's the same thing with all the official releases. Bunnhaven has them. Uh, the the Lagavulin guys got the whole jazz festival thing going on and all that. And, I, and the funny thing is, I have every Lagavulin bottle, but the the jazz festival release is the only thing I haven't bought yet. I've got the eight, the ten, the eleven, twelve, sixteen distillers. Um, 18 fish shield don't have the 25, but that's down the road. So ways 21 is one of those unicorn bottles. I'll probably never find. I would love to get my hands on that, but, um, the jazz Distill is the, the very few ones I haven't tried yet. And I'm wondering if they're worth the, the hype. I know Eric's got his hands on a couple recently, so maybe he'll throw in a sample and I'll be lucky enough to try one. But what do you guys think of the whole log of one jazz festival releases? Are those pretty decent or are they kind of like, eh, or what do you guys think of that one? They both got snapped up. Uh Oh, the Daft Mill and the Torveg? Are you talking about those, James, out of curiosity? I'm just curious on that. Well. Mm. At least Legacy Series 2017 TB. I'm not quite sure what you mean by the... Oh, the Torveg. Okay. The Torveg and the uh, the Daft Mill are probably tough to get up in the UK. Yeah, that's that's sad. That's that's what's really rough about some of these uh more, you know, craft type distillery deals. Even with a lot of the good spring banks, there's like three hundred bottles in the series they release, and unless you're really damn lucky or willing to pay three hundred dollars for a bottle of it, you just mess and, and it gets painful like i was lucky enough to pick up that spring bank 19 port cask um let me see this is one of my favorite bottles of all time the um it's a spring bank 19 port cask matured 52.4 uh percent bottles and uh this was from this was distilled in '96, bottled in May of 2016. It was fresh port. Ruby port is my favorite. I love it. I'd much rather have port uh, Ruby port than Tawny port any day. Um, but this one only had 252 bottles. I'm like 252. That's crazy. And 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 the the go price at, at from the get go. I think it was around 280. So I'm like thinking, well, my God, you know, you're out of the gate. You're, you're behind the eight ball on trying to get your hands on something like this. I was lucky to, to find it, but, um, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, a lot of bottles, unfortunately, are like that where you like get caught up by the cabling back here. Sorry. Uh, you know, you're caught behind the eight ball because it's like you got rarity already in your face. Springbank's a very popular distillery. They're very pricey from the get go because of the craft and all the work they put into it. They do their own bottling, et cetera, et cetera. 19 years. It's like a great age statement too. It's, it, 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 there's so many factors that make it really tough to get a damn good whiskey unless, you know, because if unless you're lucky enough to get it out of the gate and you have to deal with the secondary market, then you're really in trouble because then you're spending twice as much as you should be. And that's what kills me about this, this, this so-called hobby. It's like, unless you're lucky enough to be one of the lucky ones to get the golden Wonka ticket, it's like, damn, you got to pay double the price. And that's just only because there's all these bitches out there that are buying shit up to resell it. And I'm, I'm, I hate that. It's it's like the same damn thing with the Xbox Series X. I've been trying to get one for a damn year. You got these people that are just buying the shit to resell it. And I'm still here, still waiting. I'm not going to spend it a thousand dollars on one. I'm going to wait till I can spend the proper price, the MSRP for it. You know, that's just the way it is, and it, it's painful though. It definitely goes so quick. Yeah, I hear you there, man. It's it's not a, uh, it's not easy on that one. 
The 13 is a fantastic and my favorite of the Jazz Festival bottlings. I have a 2020 version, which is a 22-year-old Sherry. Ooh, and have tried a friend's. It's good, but not worth the price. Man. <sighs> Let me ask you something, Stephen. Do you feel that the more you're going through your whiskey journey, because you've been around the block a long time, Stephen is the type of guy that's got like some really nice, uh, different distillery, single cast bottlings. We're talking like Lindronic, and um, I mean, he's he's got a, a great collection i'm wondering over time since you are able to get your hands on some of these really nice high-end bottles do you feel like your critical level has 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 gotten greater and greater because of of all the things you've been able to try at a certain level or do you think that it, is it kind of is it a is it like a an obstacle in any way where you feel like, damn, it's it's like you've you've had some really you've been lucky enough to have some really good stuff early on at a at a, at a low price, but now you're dealing with all these things that are that are growing and growing because people are getting more and more into it, and the price is shooting up. Do you feel like your critique level has drifted a bit? up where you're like i don't want to say you're jaded but like that you feel like that you're hypercritical in a lot of these things or do you think it's justified where you're like you know i've i know more about whiskey at this point i'm speaking from your perspective that you feel like you know more whiskey about this point and therefore you feel like that you have to be more critical just because you you know more about what to expect more and more and more every year that you go through this. I'm just kind of curious if that's kind of part of the game. I don't think we'll see incredible Sherry Lagavulin anytime soon. The last great one was 2015 when they used all their first Philbadega European cask. Ooh, that sounds good, man. The first Philbadega European cask. Ooh, Sherry. Oh, man. That's... Yeah, it's been a while. That Lagavulin Distillers Edition I had, I wonder. You, I think it might have been 2015. Let me look and see what this this uh, bottle year is, because I'm just curious. Because I thought it was pretty damn good, but it's been a long time ago since I bought this uh, this bottle. Let's just see what we had. Oh, guess what? Oh, it was close. 2016. <laughs> It was a four slash five oh five two thousand two twenty sixteen, but this was the uh, this is the PX I think with the. Uh, did they do any Oloroso in this one? I don't know if they do or not. I can't remember off the top of my head. Pedro Jimenez cask double maturation with that. Okay, I think it's PX pretty much straightforward. Well, never mind, but. That might have a bit to do with it. I take it that back. Did they release 25 in 2016? And that was the last one. Okay. The the log of only 25 is what you're talking about. Yeah, this is just a uh, the Solar's edition from that, that 2016 period. But I thought this was pretty damn good. It, was, it made me a believer out of... This was one of the very first peated with um, sherry bottles that I had that was not a Laroso. And this made me appreciate the PX, I think. Um, I thought it was it was pretty pretty good. So that'd be, yeah, still 16 years on the, uh, not, a, not a, a straightforward age statement as far as putting a 16 on it, but you get the 2000 distilled bottle 2016. So I, 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 I really appreciate a uh, peated or heavily peated whiskey that is also in a, um, a sherried uh, finish of uh, some sort or maturation even, if I can get my hands on that. It has a double maturation. I love that. But uh, been about a while back. It's, it's sad that if the uh, newer ones aren't to that level, but yeah, I'm thinking that this one, uh, 
to uh, give you guys a final kind of a closure, I think this one is, a, if you like the black and the grooves, it's a definite pickup. Price, if you can get it for under 150 I would go for it. I'm going to have to talk to my guys about the price on this because I thought that was a bit excessive. Um, maybe it's because they did get it, get it first and they're giving me like a, a $10, you know, extra charge because they got it first. I don't know if that's the case or not. If that's the case, I'm kind of like, eh, you know, I don't want to spend extra money just to have it first per se. I'd, I'd, I'd rather just pay for it, you know, a reasonable level, you know, I don't mind waiting an extra month or two for that if that's what it takes, but, um, uh, it is kind of nice to have an early, you know, an early sip on it. Is it worth an extra 10, $20? Ah, you know, I'm not getting any money off these, these casts that I do or any whisk, you know, extra uh, whiskey outside of what you guys, you know, divvy up. Uh, and I really appreciate all the samples I've gotten over the years, definitely. But, um, it's not that I'm getting a big bonus from it. So it's kind of like, yeah, but just to give you an idea though. 120, 125, I would, I would buy this definitely in a heartbeat again. Um, I did enjoy it. Hope you guys, if you do pick it up, you don't, if you're, if you're really, really high anti, you know, young whiskey being in it at all, hopefully you don't detect it on that. I cannot guarantee that, but I do think the casks are great. 4.25 point point you know 4.5 is where I'm sitting on the 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 score on it. It's definitely above an average for me. I love the casks. I love the delivery. I wish the finish was a little bit better. I love the oiliness though. Very nice mouth coat. I don't have buyer's remorse, thankfully, but man, 130 would have been a lot less painful. We'll put it that way. So I, I have to say, if you can get it for 130, I would probably, you know, go for it. Anything over 130, I would probably be like, ah, I would wait for a, a taste from a friend or, you know, an expo or some sort of way to get it, try before you buy. If you, you already like the black and the grooves. Definitely jump all over this. It's it's better, I think, than both of those. So there you go with that. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed the uh, experience with this. I really can only judge whiskeys with the other ones I've tried. I've been fortunate enough to try some great ones. But it's becoming uh, more expensive to try them, and that's that. I agree with you. I mean, that's why it does become more and more painful every every year. I do this. It seems like to see these prices creep up, and I'm like, they they got to hit like a threshold. And I think Ardbeg has hit the threshold at 120, 125 with their official releases. That's it. I'm, uh, I mean, I know I pulled the trigger on this one because I wanted to to get a chance to get it first and and try it out and give you guys a good you know, overview of what to expect, but on the same time, damn. <laughs> the process of buying a lot of bottles because I see great bottles only going up in price at a higher rate in the near future. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's come down to, man. It's just, is, is I guess getting more of what you know that you can trust. <clears throat> and that's the funny thing. This is why I think it's crazy that these guys are mission creep pricing on us because this is always a gamble with these guys. And with Ardbeg, with the drum and the, and the, and the um, Ardbeg, and even the Perpetuum I'll throw in there. And so for some of you guys, the black and the grooves you can throw in there, it sounds like five misses makes it really tough to me to justify throwing – more than 110, 120 at a bottle, especially on a yearly basis. I mean, you know, 100, 110 was, was where I was comfortable. Now you're making me uncomfortable. Don't make me uncomfortable. I mean, it's, it's really as simple as that. So, but with that said, I'm not going to knock the, 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 the product. I think this is a good intro for the new dis master distiller at Ardbeg on that hand. Am I, you know, if this if this had an age statement of 
you know, where it was an 18, then, you know, it'd be easy to say 150 is a no brainer. Go out and get this. It's great. But since there is some younger stuff in it, probably, and all that, even with the great notes, it's, 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 it's really tough to, um, Go beyond a 4.25, 4.5 the top end and say go all in on it because, you know, for the, those that don't appreciate at all, you know, that thing. But to get this profile, you have to put some younger whiskey in it to give it that, that peaty, smoky oomph. And that's where I'm having this, this, this battle within myself to say if it's justified. But, you know... For what it is, I think I had a. Uh, I'm having a great time with it. Hell, I'm already halfway there. It looks like that's kind of scary, isn't it? <laughs> well, we'll uh, keep enjoying it, and uh, I hope you guys, you know, have fun with, uh, you know, this and other releases. Don't be af always uh, always afraid of the uh, official thing, but definitely don't pay the secondary market prices for it i will say that speaking of that theme going to get a few more in like 24 is yeah i i suggest that would be a good idea thanks i'll buy this for 150 if i can find it but i don't think i'll be searching really hard for this one yeah i i i think this this is that's a good way of thinking it you know if you could find it for 130 i'd say pick it up one bottle don't try to buy this to resell it and all that bullshit. Just buy it and enjoy it. You know, 130 if, if it's a miss, I'm not going to feel that bad for you because it can't be that much of a miss because of the quality. There is quality here. Um, but for those of you, if you weren't, you know, into the black at all or the even the grooves like Peter was saying, I would say it's a pass maybe until you can get – uh, a friend or an uh, expo or some sort of just exposure to it, maybe to, to give it a test with these committee releases. though, it's just really hard to do unless you, you know, take the risk. And I was willing to take the risk for you guys and just see, you know, what was going on. And I'm, I'm happy even though 150 is at the higher end of this 130 should have been the top end price. Tom, I'm going to talk to you, <laughs> petite sellers, after all this. But uh, I don't have buyer's remorse. So that's that's the important thing, I think, of this. And I did have a lot of buyer's remorse with the Ardbeg rye and with the drum. Not so much with the Perpetual because I got, I got it underneath $100. If it was $120, $130, $150, I really would have had buyer's remorse for that. So... I will see you guys again on Tasty Tuesday with Malt. And uh, and I think, you know, stay tuned for Malt. I'm going to give him a sample tomorrow so he can take a look at this and, and give his notes. If he's also, but, you know, you you guys that didn't like the, the black and the grooves, I'd still be maybe a little hesitant because I know we both liked the, the black a lot and a lot of you guys did not. But we'll have to see on that one. That was a mixed bag. Um, the good news is it does not feel like the drum at all. It does not feel like the Ardbeg at all. Uh, and it doesn't feel like the, um, the Perpetuum by any stretch, shape, or form. It's definitely a lot more complex. It has a lot more going on. Finish could be a little better. Could have an A statement. Could be a better price. We could go on and on. But cheers, guys. I really appreciate you all, you know, coming out and having fun with me. It's been it's been it's been great as usual. And uh, I'll be seeing you guys on the Tour Vague, the Daft Meal, and other shows we'll be doing in the near future as well. Salon Cheval, guys, hope you have a, a great night. Get your shot if you haven't got it already. Herd immunity is a great thing. Just just saying I, I'm, I'm a Republican. It's just saying. You gotta, you gotta get, get some sort of protection so we can get out of this freaking mess. See you guys, Lanchava.